So um, Australia did it a few years ago and the UK did it last week. France is due to do it at any moment. But will the rest of the world follow suit? Are the countries one, on, one by one going to get rid of this right-wing authoritarian threat? So um, I've just noticed, uh, I'm really sorry guys, if the past couple of videos have had low volume, that's because every single time I use my uh, streaming software, which happens every week when I do the radio show, but it also happened the other day when I was reading the Project 2025 um, health and human services chapter agenda for the GOP, not for the GOP, but as written by the GOP, I'm not definitely not working for them. Um, the streaming software resets my volume down to quite a low volume. And if I forget to check it before I begin recording my next video, then the video will be quieter. I finally figured it out. I will always, um, end up checking it you know, the next day or in the next video or something because I'm in the routine of doing that. But as it happens, I forgot for the past two videos. So um, my apologies for that if they've been a little bit quiet. I've just discovered it now that I forgot. So I remembered and I've put the volume back up again. But this happens repeatedly. Every single time I use the streaming software, it happens. And I use that software. You know, when I look 10 years younger and have this gorgeous complexion, that, that's when I'm using the streaming software. It just softens everything and makes me look glorious. However, um, it, um, it does seem to diminish my, my volume every single time. And there's nothing that I could do apart from remember to turn it back up again when I get back onto my usual um, camera with me being my actual age with, you know, my actual skin tone and coloring and everything. Oh, if we could just walk around with the proper filter surrounding us wherever we go, that'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? All right. So let's get back onto topic. There is a push by the left to get rid of these authoritarian type governments or threats in each country. Uh, Marie Le Pen in France is looking a little disappointed because there's been a um, a coalition built of the far left, the the moderate left, and the current um, government to work as a block against the far right. And so she's currently well the the right wingy kind of um, candidates at the time of doing this video are polling third even though they were probably going to have a majority if it wasn't for this coalition swing. So it looks as though France, if all things go to plan, I don't know when election day is. Actually, I'll have a little look, make sure it's not after this video. Let's have a look. So at the time of doing this video, the uh, French election is said to have been won in its majority tentatively um, as of an hour ago by that left wing coalition. So, um, and Emmanuel Macron is resigning. So there's a push by France and most of Europe, I would say. Also, there is a, um, there's been a push in the UK to get rid of the Tory government. Um, Keir Starmer now is uh, Prime Minister, um, Labour, which is a, a sort of a, a union-centric kind of party that is um, probably going to increase funding for national health, increase um, allowances for people to be able to help support them in times of need. And also it's very labor centric. So well, that's why it's called labor. It actually focuses on policies to strengthen the worker, whereas the Tory government would strengthen the employer and small businesses more. So you'll probably find that um, wages may go up in a Labour government. It's been around 15 years or something, I think, since Labour were in power. Oh, gosh, what am I talking about? Longer than that. Oh, no, 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 about 15 years, 15 years. And um, things definitely changed in the past 15 years. Even I was able to feel that when I was um, living in the UK. The Tories got a little bit out of control. Anyway, they're gone now. So... Um, so now it's Labour and Australia, of course, uh, switched from a conservative to a more liberal government 
um, in its most recent uh, general election as well. Um, and so, you know, the question is, is this a trend? Are people, because, you know, there's a lot of right wing hoo-ha and noise about how their their way of life and their ideology is going to take over, but they like to talk tough. But as it happens, many of the democratic countries are pushing back and the people are quietly waiting until voting day and then they are voting back a liberal majority. America is lagging behind a little bit because the election is not until November. Oh, America is a big part of this question, but... Uh, and that's because America is very much a leader across the world when it comes to the issue of democracy and power for the people. But if it were to switch to an authoritarian type government, which it would be if Donald Trump, Trump was um, elected back into office, then the power would be diminished. The people would lose their power because that's the whole point of authoritarianism is you tell people what they can and can't do. That's why you have the authority and that's why you're the authoritarian. I don't know why his supporters don't realize that. It's all there in the language, you know. That's why it's called authoritarianism, because there's one person with the power and you don't have any of it. <sighs> Anywho, right. Is this a push? Let's just find out what the cards have to say about this question of whether this is actually a worldwide push against authoritarianism and if it'll be successful. So we have the signifier and the challenge card. Great. Conscious thoughts, subconscious thoughts, the past. And then the short term. So the signifier is the tower in reverse and it's challenged by the six of swords. Tower in reverse is about slight setbacks chronic illness, um, something, you know, it's generally about stress um, and setbacks. I actually think um, that the setbacks are were, were the authoritarian push that's come in over the past 10 or so years. Because, well, I only remember it really from around about 2008 when Barack Obama was elected. It seemed that America in particular there were certain individuals within America who really didn't like having a young-ish, charismatic black president <laughs> who knew how to communicate, didn't have any drug or infidelity issues, and had a happy family. <laughs> it really found, was so offensive uh, to, um, to some people. And it was from that point that this horrible, toxic kind of mindset came to the surface and it just has been growing and growing ever since. There's always been an element of it in every country because some people just like to go that way. But that's when I first became aware of it. Um, and it exists in Australia, it exists in, in, in the UK, it exists in, in um, areas of, of Europe as well. But that's when I first became aware of it. It seems that in that 10 years or so, it's a setback rather than a calamity so far. And here we've got this challenge of moving on to come orders and rescue. So the rescue element means, you know, the French election, the Australian election, the UK election, and any other countries that have actually um, gone against this authoritarian right wing type of governance are rescuing themselves and moving to calmer waters. Okay, so that appears to be the challenge and the baseline. In the conscious thoughts, we've got the empress, and this is about prosperity. Uh, no, it's about abundance more than prosperity. It's about abundance and fertility, new enterprise, mother nature. There's a nurturing element to it as well. I think democracy is very much like that. Democratic nations tend to be where the people are most prosperous. So, for example, China. China has a lot of money right? Well, its economy is struggling, but China, that's because it has a massive population, but China does draw from a lot of resources. It also does make a lot of money. 
um, its GDP is really high. However, the people aren't well off. The people are primarily poor. And that's because China is an authoritarian government. It doesn't have the same support system. It doesn't have equality systems for its people. It's basically survival of the fittest. Um, and at any moment that you think you're fit, you could break something and not be quite so fit anymore. And bad luck for you in that kind of an environment, at least in a country like Britain, for example, which is more of a socialist type of mindset country, you have lots of support mechanisms that might be, you know, um, a little bit crumbly because it's an old, they're old bureaucratic systems that are very difficult to, to chug along over the hundreds of years that they've existed and they're cumbersome and they're expensive. However, they help people to survive during difficult times by leveling the playing field so that they can continue to pay their bills and can continue to function in life. And that's what the democratic um, countries tend to be, whether they go more socialist or less socialist is sort of almost part of a relationship between democracy and not because with democracy, people are assumed to have an equal voice. And when you have an equal voice, then you have greater opportunity to get equal rights as well. And those equal rights is what lean towards a socialist type of government. So the abundance here, I think, is when it comes to the democracy element. Um, in the subconscious, we've got the page of pentacles in reverse. This is about um, a materialistic element and wanting things easy. This can be the capitalist aspect where um, the country is a democracy and it does have an abundance and the people tend to be better off and they've come together for this new enterprise of push against the authoritarian mindset. However, we still have this commercial element or materialistic element that can provide you with some unre unrealistic quick fix type of scenarios. So I think we've also got a challenge here when it comes to whether or not it's a done deal. Let's keep going because the bottom cards will help to clarify. In the past, we've got the eight of swords in reverse. This is about, you know, getting yourself out of a victimhood. And so this would relate to the countries that have succeeded in that so far. At the time of doing this reading, it appears that France has succeeded with its left wing coalition that is going to be running the country. You also have um, the UK that has done that and now is moving towards something that is going to be more liberal in nature. You've got Australia that's also done that, that is going to be moving in a more liberal direction as well with its um, relatively new prime minister, because we've, we've had that election a little while ago. And there are also other countries that um, have followed suit, but I can't think of them offhand. So this is about getting yourself out of the difficulty. And that's in the past. And that's with the countries that are being used as a benchmark. In the short term, we've got the 10 of pentacles. And this is about working together for a common prosperity. This could very well be democracy as well. You've got here the day-to-day -day work to push this democratic liberal mindset, but then you also have um, what appears to be a little like wins in the in the short term. So let's keep going. So the way we see ourselves, yeah, exactly. The way others see us or the environment in which we sit, yep, <laughs> exactly. Hopes and fears, yep. And then the final answer looks okay, actually. So the way we see ourselves is the perfect card. This is the two of cups. This is, you know, two equal people of different types coming together for attraction, commitment and love. This is what uh, democracy and equality and liberalism um, is. This is about, you know, one is a man, one is a woman, one is red, one is blue, one is... Um, you know, rich one is poor. It doesn't matter what the differences are between them. They still come together in harmony and consider each other to be equal. And that's what liberalism is. That's where you think to yourself, you're just as much of a human as I am. Let's have a meeting of the minds and figure out how to compromise and bring it together. So that's who we think we are. The way we're viewed by others or the environment in which we sit, and I think it's the environment, is the Page of Swords in reverse. 
Now the Page of Swords, you see you've got two messenger cards here. So I think this is, and also sits in the center of the reading, which I think makes it a really important aspect of the reading. This is about malicious slander and gossip. It can be about a personality disorder and difficult childhood. Um, so when we look at these cards here, we see this materialistic, quick fix, capitalistic kind of mindset. And then we have this malicious media talk, talking down of the of your own country kind of thing. And it's dysfunctional and it has a personality disorder. And I think the personality disorder really shows the relationship between these two cards. There is a lot of neglect, for example, happening in America where people are given an equal vote ish because it all depends on whether you're rural or urban or whether you, you know, um, whether you live on a reservation or in a city with a set address that, that some people recognize and others don't. And, and, and you're kind of treated equally. Plus the electoral college leans things towards the smaller states or the, the more rural areas, counties and things like that. It's not really a true democracy. And a lot of it is controlled by this material materialism, material aspect and this capitalistic aspect. So there's been a lot of lobbying. There's been a lot of conflict of interest that's played out and made it less fair. But also it has created a personality disorder where people are disgruntled and they're not even really sure what they're disgruntled about. But what they do know is they see a beautiful sports car drive past and they don't own it. And so that makes them feel as though they're missing out. Um, it probably is the case that that's because a lot of things have been swept under the rug and haven't been dealt with. And so as much as a democratic, a democratic country is the best place to live, there's been a lot of complacency. And because of that complacency, there is a risk of people voting another way because they just aren't thriving in that democratic environment. And they're also willing to take a risk with an authoritarian government, even though it's guaranteed that they're not going to thrive in that government either. And that's where this comes in. This is the foolish vote. So the hopes and fears are about how people are going to vote. Are they going to make bad decisions? Are they in bad company? And I'll summarize to help you to understand this. It, the final outcome is one of inspiration. And um, so I actually think that at the moment it looks quite positive. But I know quite positive is probably not accurate. I think it has a positive edge to it where it looks as though that's the direction of travel. But, you know, in all of these cards, there aren't really a lot of reminders of how confident the people are. Instead, there are a lot of reminders of how we feel we are as people, but a lot of the disappointments that are around us and a lot of the fears that are around us. These cards summarize, say that democracy and pushing towards a more liberal democratic style of government has been succeeding in other countries. And there's a buoyancy and opportunities there and short term successes that have been taking place. It also reflects the mindset of the people. But the other thing that exists within the people is greed and expectations that are not necessarily realistic. And also um, everything from negative mindset to propaganda and um, interference by authoritarian governments that are trying to confuse you. I mean, I take I watch videos on YouTube as well. And if I see um, CNN, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, doesn't matter who it is, even PBS, whatever. So many comments appear that on the first glance appear to be from people, but they're really not. I can tell that they're not. These are these are bots. They're propaganda bots that are filling up the comment section with re reasonably short, sharp comments that seem to pack a punch and seem to create so much doubt in democracy and in the status quo of of government systems but they've been written by programmers and 
overseas and they're just bots. But it's very hard to tell when you just look at these comments. And so because they're getting more and more subtle and more and more sophisticated. And so nobody really knows until Election Day what the votes are going to be. And so there still is risk there. There still is risk. But the whole point is that people don't want this authoritarian mindset to take over. It has been providing setbacks around the world for around a decade, is my estimate. And people want to go another way because they're not happy with how it's going. So as much as the author pro-authoritarian voices are really, really loud, in terms of actual living human beings, they're very much in the minority. But they're also pretty well organized and are creating a lot of chaos and a lot of misinformation, a lot of confusion. And that means that people don't really know what's up and what's down. You just need to maintain the faith that living in a democratic, reasonably liberal society is going to give you rights. That's the whole point of it being liberal. And that's the whole point of it being a democracy. If you just remember those points, you don't need to remember everything and you don't need to trust everything around you. Just remember that a democracy, which is liberal, is all about giving you a share of the vote and giving you a share of the wealth and giving you opportunities to be able to express and get a res response to your needs. That's what being liberal is all about. So here we have what looks to be a tentative, inspirational way forward. But I think in light of all of the cards, tentative is an important word. Because this is, if this was the king of wands, I would say it's probably got more longevity. But the queen is someone who tends to sit next to the king in these cards. And the queen is someone who monitors the progress more than gives the order. The king gives the order in the traditional set of rider weights. And so I actually think that um, it's tentative rather than guaranteed. The important thing is not to allow yourself to become frightened and not to allow yourself to become confused. Just remember the really easy stuff. And the easy stuff is that just the standard definitions for a democracy is where every person's vote counts, which means you matter in a democracy. Your viewpoint matters in a democracy. And liberal means generosity towards everyone. So there's an opportunity for everyone to be involved. And to be liberal means to not create a harsh judgment against someone just because they're a certain way that you don't understand. So it's more inclusive. And that's where people thrive because they can vote, they have and they have rights. An authoritarian government, by virtue of the definition of the word authoritarian, means about having authority. And when, a, when an individual or a small group of people have authority, then everybody else doesn't have any authority. They're only subservient. That's all you have to remember in order to know who to vote for. That's it. And with your vote, that's what shifts the needle out of authoritarianism and then allows you to have more rights and more freedoms and more of a say with every passing year. And that's the answer to that question. So this is Ellie Dreams Ananda. Thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.